Greetings, I'm DK Roster. Welcome back to the TTT News. The Ministry of Education, in its recently held consultations, would have dedicated an entire session to TVET revitalization. It's time to go in depth on developing technical and vocational competencies through training with Assistant General Manager, Training Division at MIC Institute of Technology, Nathan Langai. Welcome, Mr. Langain. I want to start off by asking what is MIC and what is its relationship with the Ministry of Education? Okay, DK, thank you. Uh, MIC Institute of Technology is an agency of the Ministry of Education um, with a mandate to administer industry specific tech book um, training programs for prominent sectors across the landscape. Uh, the institution is funded primarily by the Ministry of Education and is also governed by the National Education Regulatory Framework. Now, the institution, I would say, would have been one of the more long-standing institutions delivering tech work. And you know, from time to time, we are consistently asked by various ministries um, to deliver tech work um, training that supplements the and the advances of offerings at the secondary school level. So, in essence, MIC IT is one of the ministry's key actors in fulfilling its goal to establish sustainable TVET pathways within the local landscape. And the fact that you say industry-specific tech work training, and then you may have a player or stakeholder asking, okay, well, deliver this course to this cohort possibly. What are some of those training offerings that MICIT provides? Well, our suite of programs is designed to sustain various sectors, that being like engineering, um, building construction, manufacturing, um, hospitality, even technical teacher training, um, agriculture and energy sectors. Um, we also deliver for the ministry four major projects and some of the viewers may be familiar with some of them, um, that being the hype, helping you prepare for employment, the must, uh, multi-sector skills training, NSDP, National Skills Development Program, and the ICP, Industrial Craft Program. Um, those four major programs that we offer range between level one to level four on the National Vocational Qualification Framework. And I didn't realize that agriculture was one of the offerings that, that is provided, but is it a perk being able to uh get work connections after training at MIC? Yes, two of our, I, I must say, two of our training offerings um, have a workplace attachment component, it, that being the multi-sector skills training program where our trainees are attached to the, to the industry and for one day for the week, they come back into center for training, similar to the national skills development program. So you would find that once persons or trainees graduate, you know, they would tend to gravitate to those same industries in which they were having their attachment with, provided that, you know, there's accommodation for them after they graduate. But if you had to describe the ideal candidate, who, how do you recruit those new trainees and who are the types of persons that you would be looking for? Okay, so consistent with the National Trust, um, and you would hear it in, in Ministry of Education, Education for All, um, MICIT's training services gives consideration to the expanse of the social spectrum um, of our national population. So ideally, there's an opportunity for anyone willing to develop themselves via the TVET conduit. Um, so therefore, recruitment, though open to the general public, um, including non-nationals is governed by a, ver um, a variety um, of programs and eligibility criteria um, per program. So trainees are recruited based on their eligibility for the program of choice, may it be age, academic background, um, maybe for the higher level programs and the experience in occupational areas. So for example, we can look at the must, for example, um, persons willing to go into the construction aspect or uh, suite of programs, they must have a level one sort of um, certification before they enter into that program. And I must say that the cycle model of our programs 
um, allow us to continually accept applications all year round. Prospective trainees can complete the application form for their programs of choice, and I would welcome persons to check our website, www.mic.co.tt, or at any one of our 10 um, technical technology centers nationwide. These applications are then processed through our registration, admissions, and records unit, and assigned and reassigned um, accordingly. So once accepted, candidates must complete our orientation program, which includes a life skills component similar to the model used in the OJT program. And the institution's goal is to release these graduates that are competent in their occupational areas um, so that they can perform and function effectively when they are placed into their various jobs. And I appreciate the fact you're talking about a life skills model uh, is building entrepreneurial capacity a, a big thrust as well, because it's one thing to have someone who's able to do a job, but then sometimes because this person is not as reliable as you may want them to be, they may find that job goes elsewhere, not because they're not able to, but because they're a little less dependable. So do you, it, is that something that is pushed at MICIT as well? Yes, we would have introduced an uh, entrepreneurial component um, in two of our programs, that being the NSDP and ICP, and also we are looking to further develop the entrepreneurial aspect of things. We are having discussions with NETCO as well, seeing how we can partner and um, facilitate that entrepreneurial aspect of training delivery. No. Mr. Langain, if somebody like me listening listen and, get, and getting very excited and saying, I wonder if they're flexible enough to allow someone to do something part-time over a long period of time, possibly weekends, because you're working elsewhere during the week. Is that, is that a possibility? Yes, that is. Um, the institution offers a large range of our short courses. Um, as well as customized training and professional development for individuals, um, as well as individual com companies or even corporations, both locally and regionally. Uh, we recently rebranded re and expanded our short courses unit. So from time to time, you would see ads being placed on our social media platforms, um, showing all the offerings in various short courses that we have. Uh, hopefully, some of those short courses, what we are hoping to do in the very near future is to have these short courses as units so that persons can matriculate into some of our higher level programs if need be. Modular units that can be used to matriculate. Niceness, Mr. Langain. We, we continue the conversation. When we return, stay with us. We return with so much more. Welcome back. We are discussing the work of MICIT with Assistant General Manager Training Division, Mr. Nathan Langain. And Mr. Langain, you spoke about the fact that the nature of the programs allows you to accept potential trainees on a, on a year-round basis. Uh, what has the pandemic done to intake of new trainees? Um. First of all, because of the various um, delays um, that we had due to the pandemic, we had to push back our trimesters um, a bit um, because we would normally have intake around September, October each year. Um, so that would have set us back. Um, generally, we have also seen a decline in enrollment, um, but not because of the applications for entry, but the foremost factor that has been affecting the institution is the reduction in funding allocation, um, which restricts us with the amount of trainees the institution can enlist, and that being because of the various costs associated with having them enrolled. So moreover, we know the economic shift as we are cognizant of that fact, um, spawned notable job losses in various, various aspects, um, many households, for a matter of fact, um, so therefore, many of the institution's trainees were forced to divert their efforts to trying to find um, income for, for their families, you know, trying to earn that extra financial assistance, right, as opposed to continuing their academic pursuits. So, but, you know, others simply did not have access to the resources required to engage in that um, online component, and of course, of study. And, you know, from time to time, we would see 
you know, dropouts and stuff like that. And looking at the trainees that you do have, what is that female to rail ratio like? And because we heard that it could be around 60 to 40 in tertiary level engineering cohorts, is that something that you experience at MICIT as well? Yeah, it's similar. Um, I think it's like two thirds, you know, yeah, so it's, it's, it's similar. All right, and I heard that beyond the training, MIC is also well known as a manufacturer and supplier of goods. Expand on that a little bit for me, please. All right. So I'd like to take the opportunity to inform the viewers that MIC started off as Metal Industries Company Limited um, through a consortium of private local manufacturing industries um, as a response to the need within the labor market for skilled and experienced craftsmen for the upcoming, at the point in time, manufacturing sector. Right. Um, even with many years of experience within the manufacturing industry, MIC's industry services division boasts of two commercial entities, that being our plastics department and also our precision precision machine shop. Right. Um, we specialize in the following areas, plastic research and product development. So some of the juice bottles and laundry detergent bottles and cosmetic jars. Um, that you would see persons selling from or selling with uh, that would may most likely would have been from our plastics department. Uh, we also do a lot of um, buckets, lids, flower pots, you know, ice cream storage containers, net pots for those who are into um, aquaponics and hydroponics. Um, we do clothes hangers and, and a host of other um, plastic products and also a lot of um, machining um, for various parts and components for the industrial sector as well. So why are we not hearing more about this, Mr. Langain? And I asked that question looking at the fact that the more that we can do within our borders means the less that we need to pay from outside. So why isn't this celebrated? What are some of those things? Is it rebranding needed? Is it just we need to ask the questions? Help me, help me understand this a little bit. I think we, we normally hear that MIC is the best kept secret. And um, I think we have to do a bit more marketing wise, um, getting out there, getting into society, um, showing MIC's face a bit more, right? And all the things that, that, that we can do. Uh, we would often boast of our engineering training program that can, you know, help the small business develop and stuff like that. You know, we have to speak about it some more. We have to get persons coming into us. You know, a bit more training and development should be taking place, you know, as well. You know, because we need to develop our local workforce um, to be able to compete. And, and we're seeing the challenges that we have um, out of our borders, logistic issues, procurement issues, you know, material and supplies taking longer to get into the country. And, you know, we can do our part in assisting in this aspect. And it is one thing, though, to say, okay, well, we have these individuals. It's another thing to say, well, like you just spoke about competing. So what kind of methods are in place to ensure, okay, well, this person has this competence, they have this skill set. So when you matriculate from this program, you have these skills. And just by dearth of someone having that piece of paper saying, I went through this program, someone said, yes. I want to use you in my organization. Okay, so pretty much our certifications that we offer um, is wide ranging. We are also accredited um, by the ACTT, that is the Accreditation Council of Trinidad and Tobago, um, the National Training Agency, also the American Welding Society. And most importantly, we have affiliation with the German Chamber of Crafts and Trades. So that being said, or oh, and additionally, um, the National Examination Council, right? So that being said, our certification that we offer and the quality assurance um, mechanisms that we employ um, would give our candidates that advantage when they go out into the industry. And I believe the employers would be aware of some of these certifications that we offer and will be willingly you know, accepting of, of, of these participants. And that makes me think that, yes, there's a level of integration between the training programs you provide and the commercial side of things. 
But in terms of next steps, what are some of the next things that you have on the agenda? So some of the next things that, that we want to look at doing um, would be training for the underdeveloped markets, um, looking at the institution, doing a bit more assessment and aligning it to a more higher education institution. So we would see an introduction of more higher level programs. Um, that being said, establishing sustainable pathways to higher education, TVET. Um, we mentioned entrepreneurship before, you know, that is something that we're really looking to push um, more from a product standpoint, service, service offering standpoint, and more importantly, innovation. So we are hoping that, you know, in the near future, we can seek to offer, you know, you can see degree programs in, in some particular tech work areas, maybe plumbing, maybe, you know, a degree program in masonry, as the, as the case may be. And if there's one thing you want individuals to take away from a conversation about MIC IT, Mr. Langine, what would that be? Well, I think one thing that we can take away and the pandemic has, has really taught us a lot is that the world is transitioning to an economy where skills will be the new currency. Now more than ever, citizens must acquire a skill um, to succeed in the emerging environment. So TVET is just as valuable as classical education and is not an alternative, but equally valuable educational pathway. So regardless of social standing, there's an opportunity at MIC um, IT to pursue training and development in a variety of occupational areas. All right. And you spoke about 10 locations. Can you, can you spout them for me at this point in time? Okay, so the 10 locations that we offer um, our training from, and there will be different offerings at these, these various locations. Uh, we have locations in, Dig we have one location in Digo Martin, Laventil, Macquoya, uh, Omera, Sangre Grande, uh, Pleasantville, uh, Pinal, and uh, two, well, one facility in Tobago and one in Point Fortin. All right, and we want to thank you. Your, your pass with flying colors, Mr. Langine. We want to thank you so much, Nathan Langine, Assistant General Manager, Training Division, MIC Institute of Technology. And on behalf of our entire news team, I'm DK Roster. Thank you for joining us.